Hey there, everybody. This is Ray Burke with Spray Wash Pro, and I am here with Everett Abrams. Uh, we've also known as Everett as Wizard of Wood, and he's going to kick off our series today and tell him a little bit about himself and uh, what he does. So, Everett, I'm going to you know, ask you the, the first question. Who is, who is Everett Abrams? All right, Everett Abrams. Uh, started in the business many years ago by accident. Uh, it's really one of those funny things. I was an operations director for uh, Kenny Rogers Roasters, and I was doing the build outs. And the guy who was doing my fire suppression said, hey, we need to start cleaning these hoods, and I need somebody to do that. And I thought, wow, there's an opportunity. So a little bit I know I wasn't going to like kitchen exhaust as much. Um, so I happened to be working one day on a residential home two months into it. They asked me if I could do it. Back. I started blasting away on it. A little bit I know the guy next door that worked for Walman did about 60% of the pressure treated wood in the United States. And he said, you know, there's a better way. I said, well, tell me about it. That's what started me thinking of wood restoration, deck restoration. And I never realized until that day with Woolman how much better it was. And I saw a bigger because I saw one out of every three or four homes being built with decks. Then. And I thought, wow, this is something to me. The rest is kind of his Long down the line, and, and and me as a person, Everett Abrams, you ask, I always wanted to be the best at whatever I did. So whether it was working at, for a restaurant or working on my own, I could be the best. So when I decided to do restoration, I decided I wanted to be the best. I put a lot of effort into it. I went outside of the pressure washing industry uh, and ended up on the floor. I was the only contractor at the time that served on the floor project. But it just grew, and I just came out in books, seminars, going to different manufacturers, companies, learning and taking in everything. And when I put it all together, that's how I actually got to everything today. And that led to doing things like guys and coming to product on and that kind of stuff that you know, the normal contractors have learned so much. Okay. That's me. So, Kenny Rogers Roasters. I haven't heard that name in years. That's amazing. Well, it's funny because it started out in Florida. Wow. How about that? And so then you started doing hoods, realized hoods suck. <laughs> there's, there's two kind of people in this world, you know, people that, uh, that uh, don't realize hoods suck and <laughs> people who do. <laughs> And the non greasers, yeah, you know, and I tell you, the guys that we, we, we did, we did hoods for three years and, and did really, really well at it. I found it to be a, a scheduling nightmare for the for for the employees that I had to get. But you know, the folks that that do hoods and like it, they're they're very, very successful at it. I mean, it's it, you know, it just it just shows you that there's so many paths you can take in this cleaning industry and, and, and many of them lead to profit and, and there's so many different things you can do, not just, just one thing, you know? Yeah. I do think that, that on something interesting, I think that you should find a niche for so many really, really good at that. And then if you want to add some of those other services to it, but I find that for me, doing kitchen exhaust and doing different things yeah and one took away from it these guys try to do everything but this is not yeah yeah and niche and niche markets are interesting because I, I think one of the one of the things people forget about the niche markets is they say well if i brand myself as as only doing commercial buildings i can't do residential but that's really not true because I mean you 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 know you're you're known as as the wizard of wood as the debt guy, but you wash the occasional house every now and then too, don't you? We probably do more homes than the pressure washers that are in my area because what happens is we sell usually a package. It's really easy to sell a house because we can sell a house with a deck real easy. We go out, we give a price of a deck. Uh, I will share with you that just a common deck restoration without a whole bunch of repairs and everything usually runs me over $2,427. $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, 
So if I take a $2,400 job and I say, hey, by the way, we also offer services in the pool, concrete, your driveway, your home, and so forth. How much would it be to clean my house? It's really easy to sell it with the price of it. Going the other way from a three, four, five, six hundred dollar house to a two twenty four hundred dollar deck sometimes is a little hard because then they say, Well, what do you know about the deck? Right. So it's easier to sell the house with it. And we've done really well with it. A lot of times what we can do uh, to get the house, we'll take it and say, Okay, this house is five hundred dollars, and then we can say, Okay. It's 250 with the deck, and then we add 250 to the deck price. And nobody's going to take. If somebody does not go with my company because I have it's 250 dollars more, then I didn't sell it right what I was doing in my services. Right, so right. Here to sell a package. Right. Interesting. Now tell me about decks. I'm always curious, and you know, I, I preach that so much of, of cleaning is regional. What kind of decks do you find yourself working on up there? Do you have a particular type of wood that, that's, that's most popular in your area? Uh, interesting question. The industry's changed a lot, and you know, to keep up on things and what's going on is, is real important. And we used to use a lot of cedar and pressure treated. They were the two main ones. Cedar's kind of going by the wayside the last couple of years because of political in nature, but the tariffs. Most of the cedar is not domestic, it's imported from Canada. So what happened is the price went up by about 31% in the United States. That took a lot of people out of the market because they said, well, if I'm going to start spending this much money on cedar, I'll just go to either uh, a hardwood like a mahogany or ipe, which will last five years plus, or to the composite decking or the alternative decking. So people either went pressure treated because of budget, because it's cheaper, they would skip cedar and then go to either the composite or the, the exotic hardwoods. The cedar's kind of lost its way in the market. Mm -hmm. so, and actually, a lot of things, you bring up an interesting point, we talk about different woods. A lot of people don't realize there's actually, every once every pressure-treated pine into one group, but there's also pressure-treated pine, which is knotty, which is not so good. We'll talk about sap and shrinkage and decks that aren't built that good. A good built deck with pressure treated will be pressure treated pine that's already kiln dried and prime. So pressure treated. Right. So a lot of people will spend a little bit more money now on that pressure treated prime to build a wood deck rather than the cedar. But you're still running about 50 50 on the on the wood to composite deck. Okay, that's that's one of the hallmarks. Go ahead. Both need to be cleaned. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One of the hallmarks I've noticed of, of Florida in general is typically we either have patios like the, the builder standard builder grade, you know, 12 by 10 foot concrete patio or just as, as I like to refer to as the damned old pressure treated deck here. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a, a yellow pine wet good i mean when they screw when you screw the boards down it's still squirting stuff you know it's squirting pressure treated uh, uh juice out of it still um and and i find more and more that that or not, i just find consistently that people aren't doing anything to their decks here in in my neck of the woods and down in in central florida except for the luxury homes of course they're they're, they're doing something and and kind of our our standard um, modus operandi I've noticed in, in Florida is throw pressure treated on it, leave it for 15 years, then rip it up and redeck it in in um, in 15 years out there. Which you know, um, again, it's just it's just different markets. But but I see you know just north of us getting up to Atlanta, then up towards you know the eastern seaboard and midwest everybody has these wonderful beautiful you know wood decks that, that need care if you build a pressure treated prime deck and even have a regular pressure treated deck as well and you were to stain or seal that every two to three years just a sealer you could use a more opaque is if you put a coating on the deck you get 20 20 years on the deck. wow you want to sell to the customer you know by we can extend the life of this deck by applying modular screening and coating. Then you can incorporate that, incorporate that into your maintenance of when you clean the home, when you do the windows, you know, the landscaping. There's 
so many ways to add this to the maintenance program and make it easier. So maintenance program, not just a cleaning, one-time cleaning. And that's, that's, I think that's important because we're getting ourselves out of this one and done with a customer. We're, we're, we're setting up a maintenance schedule with them because once you get them on a schedule, it's real easy to go back to them, right? The most fun you have in preparation is your third year because you have your repeat business coming in. So that's a lot of fun. Then when you have your maintenance customers coming in, now a lot of guys don't realize that billers are one and done. If you're into restoration and cleaning, that's a whole different story. And they're two different things too. We can clean wood, which is different than restoring. But we go out and we want to, and that's another thing too, by the way, a lot of contractors are doing part of the restoration process and they're charging for cleaning. They could be, they could be leaving a lot of money on the table and a lot of them too. But if you were to restore it, you will have to come back in two years. It's a really easy light, not like the first time, and you apply another coat or two coats. And what happens is that just stays that way. You don't have to go back and reinvent the wheel. You're not stripping off old stain. You're going back, you're cleaning, and you're recoding, and you're maintaining it. You're making a lot more money. You don't have the schedule conflict. A lot of times you could clean in the morning and, and seal it in the afternoon when you're done. You could do it the very next day. It depends. It's not like you're waiting like you like you did the first time. And I'm telling you, a lot of guys leave this stuff on the table, but the maintenance becomes so much easier. The other thing you're building up is if you have maintenance, and you, I'm sure you know this, if you have customers on a maintenance program and you have repeat customers, you have to do that. business is now working. A lot of guys, are, they don't have that. They don't have the repeat. So when they go out of business, they have nothing to sell but their Right. Don't, well, you know, and that's one of the things we want to just change the mindset of in the cleaning industry is, is we don't want to see these guys one and done. I mean, start thinking of, of the mindset of maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. You know, it, it's a lot easier to retain a customer you already have than going out and getting a new customer. Absolutely. And it's real easy. How do you get that initial? When we do, we have a form. We actually can write anything on that property. So we can do the concrete, the windows, we could do the the, the, the house, the patio, the deck. And then when we call them back, we can say, hey, we did your deck last time. We didn't do the house. You're interested in getting your house might be done. And then that usually leads to an upsell. I can tell you very rarely do we do a job when somebody calls us for an estimate that we do what they ask us to do. It's always more. It's almost always there. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that most expensive time that you're ever out at a house is the first hour. Yep. So if you can, uh, if you can, um, you know, it's, it's the rollout, the tape up, the moving the furniture, the whatever you're doing to that. And then if you can add on additional service after additional service after additional service in there, it's just, it's money in the bank. And, yeah. and, and that's the, the increase that average tip makes residential profitable. I think if you're always chasing that two or 300 a half, half, half around, it's tough to make money. But when you add other services to it, you already set up, it just works out so much. That's the way I found it out. Absolutely. So every day, Everett Abrams has crews out there washing houses and restoring decks, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, now, you also have a couple of other interests out there in that, in that one, you teach people how to properly restore, renovate, stain, seal decks, correct? Yes. We actually go beyond that. That education also uh, in, in the restoration of wood, we talk about media blasting, and we actually talk about other um, areas that the same principles apply. You mentioned concrete in Florida. There's a big uh, opportunity right now that a lot of people don't realize, and that's stamped concrete. There's a lot of beautiful stamped concrete around, and most people don't realize that the big demographic of the people restoring stamped concrete are homeowners because they get contractors who can do it. 
And the contractors that do drill usually are between, and this is another crazy thing, three to ten dollars a square foot, depending on what kind of work's being done. But there's a lot of money being left out there. And in the case of wood and then stamped concrete, we're cleaning, we're stripping, we're restaining, we're resealing, we're putting on the coat. The only difference is we're putting a little paint on the on this in the sealer so it's not too slippery. But a lot of it is the same principle along the way. And that's another add-on service. So we teach on the add-on services, and we also teach um, you know, a lot of the how-tos on other methods and other ways that you just don't get on the internet or on the Facebook or wherever. I mean, we're showing them six different cleaners and eight different ways to strip and restore the wood as well. There's a lot of stuff out there now that makes it a lot easier. So education is important, and I think a lot of guys, no matter what they're doing, we've all been guilty of it, where we, we learn something and we say, okay, I know it now. Years go by, and you say, "Well, you now I haven't been keeping up with this." And it could be anything else in our life; it doesn't have to be what we do for a living. But there is a lot of stuff that's changed in the coding industry over the last ten years because the uh, the feds got involved with VOC compliance, a lot of the environmental stuff, and that's caused a lot of new different types of coatings, which also created um, different types of cleaners and strippers and products. So education is one of the problem now that at every level to make our jobs easier. So I enjoy the education. I love teaching. Um, you know, I tried to get away from the Wizard of Wood thing before because I thought it was so silly. And that came from chat rooms years ago when I used to do stuff like that with, yeah, with chat rooms. Now I embrace it. Um, but I've had more fun teaching probably than anything because I get people that I've either taught, I've seen at conventions and seminars and different things. And I never get to see what the end result is until I see them in person. They say, Everett, let me show you what I could do because of your class or because of your instruction. They pull out their phone or their iPad and they're showing me the pictures. And it's really, really rewarding. So I really enjoyed the educational part. I 100% I, I agree with you. It's been since I've, I've started teaching a lot in the past four years or so, absolutely the most rewarding part of my job is is having people come up to me and say, oh my gosh, look what I got, or look what I cleaned, or my business is doing this, or, or just, you know, I, and I love it. I mean, it, put, it, it makes my heart just jump out of my chest. I'm so proud of these guys. So uh, anybody out there, if, if, any, if, if a teacher's ever helped you, tell them, because it really it really does us well whenever, whenever we hear that. Um, now, we're going to put a link on here because you do, I know you do a lot of live classes, right? Uh, and you're also doing webinars about web, web uh, wood restoration, correct? Correct. The, uh, the webinars are a small example of uh, a class. It's 15, 20 minutes, but we'll take a topic or a subject. And then what I like to do is the technical part of it, but also how it applies to the business, a business topic. So if we're talking about, uh, just say, for example, a stain, about how we would sell the customer on the business end of it. So I try to take that technical and apply it to the business. Now, that's only a piece. When you take the class, we kind of you know, engulf the whole thing. And the classes that we um, and the two or three classes, you know, because I do have my own product, I don't just do no matter what your scenario is, type of cleaner, sealer, stain, coating, paint, we go through the whole gamut of everything. It doesn't matter what you're choosing, you will learn how to take care of, maintain, strip, everything. And that's what we can do. I think that's why I always get fun, because I teach, not just based on what yeah, you know, I, I learned I learned something from you just the other night uh, about the the light oils and the heavy oils. Um, I, I didn't realize that you know there was such a, a vast difference in the the penetrating type of the oils that got down deeper versus the stuff that really just stayed on the surface. Now, obviously, I knew that difference with the acrylics versus the oils, but just in the oils themselves, knowing that different oils react differently. And that's a good example of the class because you take the class, you realize that the penetrating oils are easier to maintain, easier to uh, use moving forward. You can base your business around that. The film forming oils, you can. So they're the kind of things you learn. 
how you can be successful in your business moving forward. And you can't learn that. I'm sorry, but if you go to a Sherwin Williams or or Ben Moore or some of those, those manufacturers, they're going to teach you their products, and they have those built. You will get good products, good information. We're building your business forward. There are better products out there to help you maintain and move forward. You mean going to Home Depot and, and asking staining advice from the guy that was in uh, plumbing yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and that brings us, uh, I'll use that as a segue into there. Products, using the right products. Now, you also have a product line as well, correct? We do. We have every type of restoration product. So for cleaning, everybody just thinks it's perfect. We also have a product. That's a product. If you have uh, something with a lot of organic growth or needs a little bit of a light stripper, we have a product in the middle. We have a restore, we call it a rest our restore. But then we also have two different types of strippers as well that we use. And we have, we have house cleaner. We have all the other products as well. And then we also have stains. We're looking at a couple of different colors. I never really wanted to do more than four. I said at first, now we're at six different colors and tones. Probably going to go to eight. Uh, this year, we have two other colors we're working on. I don't see it going much further than that. These are mostly just what I want to do is be able to cover the basics. And I want to be able to have products that are easy to maintain, like I said. So mine's a water-based product. And if you have water or oil, it has to go into the wood so that when the top, top starts to wear, it's easier to clean and replenish. If you just have anything film forming, whether it's water or oil, once it goes away, it's gone and you have to reinvent the wheel. So there is no maintenance really. So we want a product that's maintainable. Um, years ago, I used to use a product that I thought was the greatest thing in the world. And when I did, when I heard that they were going to get rid of oils, I got nervous. I got scared. I'm like, geez, you got to be kidding me. And they were saying that the Forest Products Lab 10 years, well, it's been 15 years ago. So what I wanted to do was I really want to work my efforts were in creating a water-based product that performed like an oil or like that product I was using. So that's why it's based around that. So a lot of people have this, um, this, this, you know, they feel that all the water bases are film formers and hard to deal with. But there are others, the, the products have come a long ways, and there are products that do go into the wood and, and so forth and do the things like oils. Do. Right, right. I mean, you've got, it, it blows my mind whenever I start looking at the difference in acrylics over the past 15 years to, to now, I mean, I, I see it where they really do mimic the old-fashioned oils as, as well as, you know, some of the old oil products did, don't they? A lot of changes that happen. And for the people who are, are watching this, you know, this isn't just a one-size-fits-all. The United States is made up of different states. And where these, this federal act in 2009 went further than the federal regulation. So places like California and where I'm at work very even tougher and tougher a product in California. So where each state is looking to so educating yourself on what's available. Okay. So each state's gonna be a little bit different on what you can do and what products you can use on that. So Yeah they have to meet their state Okay. I'm getting a little bit of audio fade in and out probably from our signal here, but it'll clear up in just a second. Um, so talk about your product line. Um, now, you're based in New Jersey, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, what areas do you serve in New Jersey as yeah. far as your washing restoration? The service part of our business is all of South Jersey. We do travel for some. Uh, when I say that, I mean, people are going to jump out of their seats when they hear this, but... We do a lot of riding and that kind of stuff. It's big in this area. Nothing's under 10000 and we very often do them around $30,000 and up. If somebody's going to pay me $35,000 to restore the Pennsylvania, we'll go over to kind of cap it on about an hour and a half. And we'll put the guys up in hotels if necessary. Okay. So we'll travel a little bit. There is a lot, though, in my area that I don't have to travel usually over an hour for anything. Right. It's, uh, that's on the service. The product end of it, uh, you should have four large distributors and cover the entire United States. So, 2000 year from 
the deck restoration. Awesome, awesome. So, so we've got yeah, and your products do people buy direct from you or buy from the distributors? I'll be able to do either one. Okay, excellent. Well, we'll make sure we have that uh, that link up here now. Um, so, tell me why. If, if I'm a guy who's looking at this, I'm, I'm already washing and I've been thinking about um, getting into wood restoration. Why should I do that? Tell, tell me your idea of why I should get into wood restoration. Uh, I, I, I personally feel it's more property. Uh, I know one part of it is very rewarding. When we take, um, you know, you could take a house that has all kinds of old mill or whatever and make it look great and you feel good about it but there's something about taking wood from a gray state or not a lot of mold or mildew or, or a mess and then when it's restored it's so easy to get paid. It's so easy to sell it to the neighbors and so forth and then on top of it the average ticket is higher it's more profitable just and it really sells the service that sells it so I mentioned earlier on restoration. Start adding start adding some other services. A lot of people don't realize adding post cap lighting is really easy. Low level lighting. I mean, there's just so many things upsell on that job. So you take that 2427 now and you start building from there. On top of that, an average deck. You can go out in three or four hours and clean the deck one day. You go out the next day, two guys in you know four hours, you know, four hours, the same with them. We got twelve hours into it and make twenty four hundred bucks. Yeah. Two hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. Oh that's yeah, it's a fantastic uh, fantastic hourly ticket there. You know and I like that, you know, being able to, to do repairs and the, and the low level lighting, you know, that's, that's always, a, you know, people that are spending money on, on, on restoration and on, on people that have this pride, they're willing to spend money on other stuff in their backyard. You know, they're, they're willing to, to do this stuff. And, and, and let's say you did low level lighting there. Well, that might be the person that wants to do the, the, the low level landscape lighting as well all around the house. And, you know, it could really explode into, into other things. And if the neighbors say, and they say, wow, look at them. You did your, you sold the truck. Boom, 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 boom. It really is, a, it really sells itself. Very, it's very common. You go into an area, you don't do one home. Usually end up doing quite a few. I expect. Do you do any? Um, do you have logo trucks that the people see deck restoration plus out there? Do they see signage? Do they see you know that that in front of the neighbor's yard? They see the vans. They see the vehicles. The trucks. The logos all over the place. They have Wizard of Wood on on them as well. So that creates a little bit of. Matter of fact, good story is I went to get my coffee this morning at my local. We have a Wawa's up here. Well, you have them in Florida too now. Um, but we have, uh, I went to the Wawa and we see the signs, can I get your card? I need a deck built. You build decks too? I said, oh yes. As a matter of fact, I'm on my way to an estimate for a deck build today. And by the way, while we're talking about this, I did close a $15,000 deck today. So it's been a good day. Very um, nice. Building of the decks is a, something we added to the business model. Like I said earlier in the conversation, half the decks are still built with wood. Those people, when they build a wood deck 20 to 25 years, if we build the deck and we do it right, that's a customer for life. So hopefully my son is going to take care of that deck when <laughs> at the end of that 25 years if we're building it now. But I mean, it builds a customer base as well by building them. And the average ticket on a deck build is, is, is up there too because of the composites and so forth. So it's, it's really become a fun, a fun business that I have. I, I enjoy it a lot. Right, right. And, you know, and I think that's, one of the things that we can never lose sight of is the fun that we're actually having. Remember, we're, we're in business. We should be having fun, you know? And I'll tell you what, this, this thing sure beats the heck out of sitting there working for somebody or punching a clock or, 
I mean, you know, entrepreneur, that, that old joke about the entrepreneurs is, is somebody that will work 80 hours or 100 hours a week for themselves so they don't have to work 40 for somebody else. Um, you know, it, it, it truly is like that. Now, tell me this, employee-wise, is, is this something what you do? Can you teach an employee how to do this? Great question. Um, yes. I don't think, I, I always say this to everybody. I don't think anything we do is hard. We make it hard. So it can be trained. The only thing you would do differently is, as an owner of a business, there are things and equipment and different things you may do that you may not want employees to do because of what could happen. And this goes back into pressure washing as well because of the products we use and stuff. We want to make sure things don't go where they shouldn't. So for my guys, we actually sell a brush application as, a, as the most quality way to apply a stainer sealer over spray. But we use airless sprayers, and that's just another thing that as a business model that I believe in. But we use the airless sprayers. If you're not, you don't have trained employees that can really operate these airless sprayers. I mean, they can drift. They can be all over the place. So person may change their business model with employee. It may take a little longer to get the job done, but if you're making up for it on the other end, it doesn't matter. And usually what happens is, let's just say, for example, I have a two-man crew spray and two-man crew that's brushing. It took them an extra hour each to do a job, so two extra man hours. It's not killing me. If it took four hours, it's really not killing me um, as far as that, but I've charged more for that service because it's brush application. So when you say, can it be trained? Yes, you just want to be careful on your business model on how you're going to work that plan. You know I, mean? uh -huh. I, I, yeah, I know there'll be contractors hearing this and going, I couldn't imagine ever letting, letting my employees go out with buckets of stain and, 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 and you know, attack a house based basically, or attack a deck and without me being there to supervise on, on every one. But you really can let you, I mean, once you've trained your employees, you can do that, correct? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I would, and I've said this for years, I have employees working for me that I feel are better than the, some of the business owners that are with me. I think they do better work. They're just happy to be with me. But they do really work. The key is people need to look at training as an investment into the company. And it's not just train to make my job easier, train it so they can help me with, to get the job done. I want to train those guys to be as good as I am or better. And if, really, if you invest into that training, it makes a huge difference. I'm not worried about my guys going out and spraying, but I usually have two main crews with a lead and then a helper. And that lead, you can can do the things that I need or better. Right. I get that question all the time on estimates where the homeowner will say, well, are you going to be here? Are you going to be here when they're doing the job? And, you know, a lot of times I laugh and I'm like, ma'am, I'm the last guy you want up on your roof. <laughs> Um, you want the guy, you know, you want my highly trained employees who, who do this every day for a living. Uh, to, to be the ones uh, dancing around up there and, and, and you know, and, and taking care of your prize, you know, roses. Um, I, I'm a, I'm a, let's get it done, move it, move it, move it, guys. You know, my guys have to slow me down, but, uh, yeah. I, I just, I, I have found that over the years that when you take the time to train people uh, in your company, they look at as like a badge of honor too. They feel better about their job, so it's it goes it works both ways, and they feel better about the the job they're doing. And when they know that there's a responsibility to that, so when they go out and they know that they're 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 using that airless sprayer, um, like we're we're talking about specifically, and and that they're trained to do that, and that I trust them to do that, it's saying that I say something about them without saying it. And it goes a long ways. Um, but just so you know, uh, real quick, that airless sprayer I mentioned, an airless sprayer will spray any type of coating, paint, anything. So everybody talks about these 12-volt sprayers and you know, yada, yada, whatever else. I, I don't It blows my mind. 
before applying coatings, painters, too, they use airless sprayers. Why we don't talk about airless sprayers? You guys put a coating on. I am confused because it is good stuff. And not only that, in the log cabin part of it I was talking about earlier, those guys are using sprayable solvent based strippers to airless sprayers. But nobody thought about that. In our four walls of the pressure washing industry, that's the kind of stuff that can make a job a lot easier for guys. And I see guys posting all the time, not all the time, but they'll post about, hey, somebody asked me if I could clean their log home or their wood sided home. They don't realize what they're getting into. And if they do, they find out that there's good ways to apply, clean, and half the time they're doing part of the restoration process, they could probably get paid more as well. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. You know, that would be a, a niche market, I, I especially think, for for some of the guys up in, you know, North Jersey, uh, up in the mountain area. North Jersey, yeah, in Pocono, New York, North, you know, that area, uh, uh, North Carolina, Western North Carolina, Eastern Tennessee, you know, places where log cabins are, are, are prevalent out there. And uh, I would have to think that would be a huge business if somebody wanted to get trained and specialized. Huge market. I take it. And you don't even want to know the profit. I, I bet it's insane because, you know, if you, if you call a painter in there to do it, um, the painter is going to be incredibly high. And a lot of times the painter is actually not going to do as good of a job as, as the cleaner is going to do because, you know, so much of it, and I don't mean this in any disrespect to painters that are out there. Um, but, you know, I, had a, I liken this to a customer that I have that has a historic house up in, in Thomasville about uh, 45 minutes north of me. And uh, we met each other about four years ago, and part of his complaint, this is a house built in the late 1800s, and he's like, you know, I have my painter come out here every year to wash my house, and, and by God, it seems like every year after he gets done, He's got touch-up painting that he has to do after he washes my house. And I, I laughed, and, I, and I'm like, well, it, it's kind of like asking a barber if you need a haircut, you know? I mean, well, the, 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 the painter is, is almost looking for a, you know, he's undercharging you on the cleaning, but he's trying to find that flake of paint where he can, yeah, you know, get that, that tip up under there and, and cause some flaking and say, look, look, we've got a paint right here. <laughs> where, where a lot of us as cleaners, I think we've got the mentality more of extending the life of that job. Let's make whatever coatings on there last longer and get more money out of it. You pay us a little bit and we can get your value. Correct. Absolutely. In the case of wood, painters are usually painting over something. So they wouldn't want to paint over the wood. They're not as good on that cleaning restoration part of it. So a lot of those guys will use a pressure washer with water only, or they may use some bleach. Um, and they do a real quick light clean, and they hire a pressure washer to do that part, and then they paint over. That's one. But when you're actually going to restore the wood, they're going to get paid more. And that's why I say a lot of these guys are leaving, if they're working on wood side and they're leaving money on the table. I hear all the time. Let's just say, for example, I mentioned a minimum job of $10,000 on a, on a wood side at home. If I were to do that, um, I would probably just for cleaning, I don't, I don't do a whole job, but if I was, I'd be at least a third. So if I had this wood side at home, I would charge $1,333 to prep the, the cabin, the wood side at home that I'm talking about. But yet I see guys posting, I talk to guys all the time and say, hey, I went out to do this house, you know, it had some mold and mildew, they're going to stain it, they're going to reseal it. I said, oh, how much did you do? Uh, $800, it was a good money job. Are you kidding me? You just left thousands of dollars on the table and they don't even realize it. And the painter would charge more than $800 to, to, to prep, the, prep it if they were going to break up the pricing as well. So. And the painter to slap bleach on it with a, with a uh, the player's going to slap some bleach on it with a with a soap tip and an injector and uh, then go 
recode it and call it good. Yep. So, I love it. Absolutely love it. Well, Everett, we've been on for a while now. Is um, probably start wrapping up. Is there anything? What else do we need to talk about? Give me some more things that, that we need to tell uh, tell our folks out here. Okay. Um, the big thing I would tell anybody is, you know, what restoration. You, you know, I revolve my business around it, and I've changed my business model has changed over the years. I used to do fleet washing, commercial washing. We we did twenty. We worked, you know, twenty five hours a day, eight days a week. We did school buses. We did movie theaters we did i go right down the list of all the stuff we used to do and still do our the work we do now started working smarter really honed in on the wood restoration and so forth and i revolved the business around that if you're a window cleaner or a landscaper or a pressure washer or a pick, whatever you are you could add a wood restoration service to your business and if you treat it the right way and you try to say okay i'm going to do an optimal job on this whether it's a a front door, a garage door, a deck, a wood side at home, a fence. It is really, I mean, it, it just leads to so much more work. You just do it right. Don't look at it as this is a splash and dash service. It's not going to be a quick and easy one. But if it does take you a few more hours or a second day to do this, your average ticket and your average hourly price will be more than what you're getting for just pressure washing or soft washing. And that's what I found out over, over time. So you could add it as a service, just, you know, do the, do the education and the research part and do it right. And you'll see those average tickets go up. Yeah. And I mean, also, whenever you, whenever you start doing that niche market and you start, you know, basically declaring yourself and as an expert in a field, I mean, or a specialist in a field, what what happens with a specialist? You get more money with a specialist. You know, I mean, my my insurance copay for my doctor is twenty five dollars a visit. My copay for a specialist is fifty dollars a visit. Absolutely right. And people don't. Want, and I like that. My business model is based around that customer. I'm not. I, I know that some people look. There's Walmart and Kohl's sell jewelry, but they have one customer. If you want. To go to Saks Fifth Avenue, don't expect to get Walmart jewelry or Kohl's jewelry. So it's the same thing with the services we provide. You know, if you want that that three hundred dollar deck, you don't want Deck Restoration Plus. So, I, and I find that the people on the lower end are the ones that usually are the. I hate. I'm not trying to be too mean about it, but they're the ones you usually have more problems with. The people that don't mind spending the money, they understand the value of upkeep and, and especially with wood restoration and they don't mind paying for a good job because they've seen some of the other stuff and they know they spent a lot of money on that wood siding the deck the fence whatever it is but they do want to take care of it so that's a customer for life and like i said if you're offering pressure washing services it's still a customer for life it's just added service that you've added but they see you do quality work on a niche thing like wood and it could be another niche as well um your, your money, your gold, those customers are there for life. Now, people will move away, people, you know, whatever, but you're going to mean you maintain 50% or more of the of, of those repeat customers. They're, they're not out there shopping you around uh, every time the money mailer comes out in the mail with, with a stack of coupons in there and they're saying, oh, look, this guy does, does deck cleaning for two hundred dollars they're not running over there to call them they're they're you know they're calling you back Ray, this happens a lot people will call on the phone and they will say you're the guy that i'm gonna have me do my deck or i was told you're the guy that has to do my 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 log cabin i mean i already know they're going to pick me before i've already gone out there it's a huge advantage when you're going out to do a bid or a proposal that you already know you've got the job I, I get I get that every now and then in Tallahassee on some of them, you know, we, we like these larger projects and and um, every now and then we'll get a call from a, a particularly difficult building and, and the facilities manager will say, Well, I, I guess I'm using you and laugh, why are you using me? It's like because this company said to use you, this company said we should call you, and this company said <laughs> we should call you. So, yeah, I mean, the, the job is pre-sold for you whenever you start getting that many referrals, even from your competition. And isn't, it, isn't that when it's fun to own a business? Yeah. I mean, 
those kind of things happen. It's it's fun. It's rewarding. That's like you add zeros to that invoice too. <laughs> yeah. Well, Everett, I want to thank you so very much for your time. I'm going to stop recording. Hang on there for me, but. Uh, Everybody, if you're joining us late, this is uh, Everett Abrams, the Wizard of Wood Deck Restoration Plus uh, here on uh, Spray Wash Pro. Thank you all for, for watching. We really appreciate it.